The Kentucky Chamber of Commerce represents more than 2,500 businesses in the Commonwealth, from mom and pops to Fortune 500 companies. It could be argued that the best thing, best social program in the world is a job. As president and CEO of the chamber, Dave Ackeson says when it comes to poverty, the chamber stresses the need for economic development and job creation. We want to improve education for Kentuckians at all different levels of their educational progress because ultimately we think that's the best way to address poverty in Kentucky. So if we, if we say that education is, is a solution, a possible solution for poverty, other people would say, and maybe this is oversimplification of the issue, that if you just pay people more, Dave, right. then we'll have less people in poverty. What I think that argument uh, ignores not through any sort of malice or, or, or uh, evil intent, but just because of lack of exposure. Many, many businesses these days live on the edge. We saw a lot of businesses go out of business during the recession. Businesses that you wouldn't expect to be globally competitive really are. Ackeson says it's not a matter of business owners being dispassionate about workers' wages, but mindful of the fragile global marketplace that drives wage decisions. There's, I think, a popular myth, uh, and I remember this from my hometown of Owensboro. People said, well, b the big businesses here want to keep out new businesses because they want to keep the late wages down. You might find isolated cases of that, but generally business people, certainly the members of the Kentucky Chamber, most of whom who pay considerably more than minimum wage, very few of our members would actually pay the minimum wage because the market dictates what they're going to have to pay, uh, and they pay more. But Generally speaking, they're not in the interest, it's not in their interest for wages in a community to be held down. They want people to have buying power. They want people to succeed. Many companies are putting in major investments into educating their employees or supporting them with college tuition, et cetera, et cetera, even if that means some of those employees will leave them and go to greener pastures. So um, we want. I mean, the Kentucky Chamber stands for improved prosperity, and we think in the most simple, basic terms that the answer to that is improving education. But when we think in terms of what's government's role in helping people live, as I've heard it referred to, a more dignified life when it comes to their finances, what would the Kentucky Chamber say is the government's role in aiding and abetting that? Right. Uh, well, we would say government's role is to set tax policy and other employment policies in such a way that allows employers to be competitive in the global marketplace. And while the business community typically has some concerns about artificial increases in the minimum wage, they don't do that because uh, that, the voice of the business community in that regard is not philosophically inclined against people making more money, it's the question of how much will government mandate and what are the unintended consequences. If you say, okay, tomorrow we're going to raise the minimum wage and everybody, all employers have to pay at least a dollar more for their minimum wage workers. Some, uh, some firms, for example, I would think in the hospitality industry, restaurants example, they say, okay, well, we can only pay X number of dollars this year and stay in business, so we're going to have to cut back on the hours. Or we're not going to be able to hire any teenagers this summer for work because of the minimum wage. We're going to have to make ends meet. He contends it's really the education system that determines whether or not Kentucky can attract quality, high paying jobs. You know, if you brought another Toyota to certain parts of Kentucky today, they couldn't staff up. They couldn't get the workers they would need if a car company wanted to locate in certain areas of Kentucky. Um, and if you offer, let's say, 100 call center jobs, and let's say they pay $9 an hour. Um, and you have 400 people line up the first day for those 100 jobs, then the market is telling you that 400 people want that that would be an improvement. They wouldn't be standing in line if they didn't see it as a personal improvement opportunity for themselves. So the market dictates some of that. And if nobody shows up for those jobs, then the employer has to scratch his or her head and say, okay, can we even locate a company here or can we find a way to stretch up and pay nine and a quarter an hour? then maybe more people will stand in line and want our job.